Hello, I'm Michael Gashi, product owner for Adobe Prelude. In this video, we're going to take a look at the entire workflow from ingest, logging, rough cut, and then export into Premiere Pro for Adobe Prelude CS6. So we'll begin by ingesting media directly into the Prelude project panel by clicking on the ingest dialog. Here on the left hand side, you can see all the mounted drives on the system, as well as the folders and all the media showing up. What we're going to do is select a few clips, and then we'll tell Prelude we want to ingest those and have them appear directly within our project panel. I'm going to make a few selections here. And as I do that, I'll also bring the mouse back up, and I'll scrub the videos back and forth, and you can actually do a quick preview to make sure that the video that you've got here selected is what you want to bring in. And we'll just do a quick review here. You can also click directly on the video, and it becomes what we call player active mode. You can tell it's player active because you've got the scrubber at the bottom and you've got the play track. So as you move this back and forth, you can watch the video. You can also play back by hitting the space bar, and that'll also produce audio for you as well. You can also use JKL, keyboard shortcuts, to rewind the video, stop, and go forward. It's a great way to review your, your video before you actually spend the time ingesting it. Now that we've got our media selected, we'll come over to our transfer options. In order to copy the media off of your camera or your memory card onto your computer, you want to make sure you check the Transfer Clips to Destination checkbox. Doing that enables all these controls. The primary destination is where your media is going to end up. So we'll use our default uh, Demo1 folder that we've used in previous demos. And if we wanted to, we can actually transcode this media on ingest. By checking this box, you can see that we've got two drop-downs here up here. One is for all the formats that Adobe Media Encoder supports, and then the next one is for all the presets for the selected media type. If I were to check this as it is now and hit the ingest button, this uh, prelude would send a request directly into Adobe Media Encoder. You'd see these options appear, and AME would transcode these files for us, and then put the transcoded media directly into our project panel. I'm going to disable that now for demo purposes. If we're not going to do a transcode, we've got a verify option that's available. There are two ways to verify media during the transfer. One is by file content, and one is by file size. File size is pretty self-explanatory. All we do is compare the before and after images of all the content that was on your card and how it looks after the copy is completed. As long as they match in file size, this will pass. So file content is more robust. It's actually a binary CRC check. Um, if you really want to make sure that the copied material is exactly the same between what you've got in your source and your destination, you definitely want the file content option selected. And if you want to select any additional backup destinations, you could do so by selecting the Add Destination button. So now that we've made our selections and we're ready to go ahead and transfer our clips, I'm going to click the Ingest button here in the dialog. Down on the bottom left corner, you can see a progress bar quickly speeding across. And as it makes its way, you can see the items that we've selected appear inside our project panel. Now that we've got our media inside our project panel, we're ready to go ahead and start logging. To do that, simply double click the first clip you want to log. Over in the monitor window, we've got standard transport controls for playing back the video and fast forward and scrubbing and so on. And you can do a quick preview of what you've got. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and show how we log uh, two different types of, of markers. One is subclip marker and one is a comment marker. You can see these on the left hand side in our marker type dialog. By default, Prelude is going to ship with six different marker types. We're going to focus on the first two. It's also worth noting that you can actually customize the markers in Prelude by writing your own custom marker types. More information on that can be obtained by looking at the Prelude SDK. Right now what we want to do is go ahead and demonstrate the keyboard driven workflow and add some markers. So I'm going to hit the spacebar to play. I'm going to create a comment marker that says, here comes the car. And now I'm going to go ahead and do a quick stop. So right now you notice that right under the timeline here, we've got a heads up display. It's asking for the description for my comment marker, and it's basically a text edit field. It has the focus. However, I also want control of the playback engine at the same time. In order to do that, I would normally want to hit my, my JKL keyboard shortcuts to control the player. But as you can see, as soon as I hit JKL, I get JKL in my description field. And that's not what we want at all. So to get around that, I hold down the Alt key on Windows or the Option key on Mac, and then I can hit J, and you can see I'm going reverse, J again to go faster, K to stop, 
L to go forward. So basically I have full transport control here of the player while still having complete control of the edit, of the edit box. This is a really nice uh, handy feature. When I'm done with my, uh, uh, my text description, I can hit enter to commit. I can use JKL now to set to the out point and I can go ahead and hit the O key and I set the out point for my marker at the same time. So in the timeline, you can see I've got this nice comment marker. If it wasn't quite lined up exactly how I want it, I can grab either handle on, on the ends of the marker and adjust them. I can also click in the middle of the marker and drag it left and right and position it exactly where it needs to be. So that was a comment marker. So now let's go ahead and do the same thing, but this time we'll add a subclip marker. And instead of using a keyboard driven workflow, I'll use the mouse. I'm going to grab the playhead and I'll move to the point just where the car starts to appear at the top of the ramp. I'm now going to come over to the marker type panel. I'm going to click on the subclip button and you can see I now have a blue marker up here and in the HUD it's asking me for a name. We'll call this top of ramp. I'll hit the tab key. Now it's asking me for a description. This is when the car is at the top. To set my out point, I'm just going to grab the CTI, the playhead that is, and I want to stop just after the car passes and hit O. Now I've set my out point for my subclip marker. And for fun, I'm actually going to move my comment marker to be right on top of my subclip. Now very quickly, I'm going to open two more clips and I'm going to set some additional marker points because we want to put these clips together into a rough cut next. So this time, here's this next clip. I'm going to go and scrub this down. And right here, I'm going to set my endpoint for a subclip. And I'll say car at bottom of ramp. And we'll drag that all the way past the point where it's going to do a jump. And right before it lands, right about there, we're going to set the out point. As you can see in the time, I've created another subclip marker. And I'm going to add a comment marker on top of it. This is when the car makes the jump. Move the playhead over to the end, set my out point, and save my changes. I've got one more clip. We're going to take a look at this one. This is a camera that's at the end of the ramp. Now you can see there's nothing really interesting happening at this point. I want to catch it just as the car makes itself visible, right about there. And here we'll set our final, uh, what's kind of final take. Hit enter, and let's see how this ends. We'll stop it right here after the spin out. Okay, so what I've done really quickly, I've taken three clips, I've logged them, I've added some comment markers, and I've added some subclip markers. Up here in the project panel, you can see I've got three subclip items. I've got the top of ramp, I've got the car at the bottom of the ramp, and I've got my final take. These are subclips that we created. They're not actual files, they're just references into the master clips themselves. So now we have our subclips, and we're ready to put them into a rough cut. To do that, I'm going to click on the new rough cut button here at the bottom of the project panel. It's going to ask me for a name and a location. I'm just going to call this sample RC for sample rough cut. And it gives me this item in the project panel, sample RC. To open it, simply double click. In my timeline, you can see there's nothing in the timeline right now, and the monitor is also blank. It's waiting for me to put uh, some media into it. I'm going to grab that first subclip we created. And you can select multiple clips at once, but we'll just do one at a time. I'm going to select the first top of ramp, and I'm going to drag that into the rough cut. And you can see here it is. Now I can play this and I can watch this. It's just a very basic sequence at this point. And you can also notice that the marker that we added, the comment marker, this green bar, comes with it. This is read only at this point. We can't change it. We can't grab the handles and move it around. But it's a nice reference point for information. I'm going to grab the next subclip we created, which is at the bottom of the ramp. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to put it at the end of the subclip. Now you can see I've got one, two clips, and I'm slowly building my rough cut. And here's the final take. This should be the jump and the last spin out. I'm going to drag that and put it at the end. I'm going to save that rough cut by Control S. So now you can see I have a very basic sequence. I've got three clips. It's cuts only. There's no transitions. There's nothing really fancy going on here. But I'm able to tell my story from the perspectives and using the subclips that I want. And there it is. And there's the end. And here's the final spin out. So what do I do with this rough cut? Well, this is about as far as I could take it inside Prelude. Prelude is not an editor. It's a logger and a rough cut generator. So what I want to do is select that rough cut, and I want to send it into Adobe Premiere Pro. To do that, I simply select the rough cut, go to the File menu, and say Send to Premiere Pro. Now, I already have Premiere Pro open, 
and here it just switched immediately directly into Premiere Pro. And you can see here's my sample RC, right? So this is the rough cut we just created. Here in Premiere, it's now a sequence. Along with it came the three clips that we just logged. So I can double click on the sequence. You'll see in the timeline, we've got our three clips and the markers come across as well. You can see these green bars directly in the track items themselves. Now something that's kind of neat here is I can edit this. If I didn't quite get the in and out points just right for my sub clips, I can come in here as the editor and I can trim this again. I can move these to where I want. I can move my uh, clips together and kind of reposition everything and make the edit exactly how it needs to be for final broadcast. There we go. Okay, so now we've switched back to Prelude from Premiere. There's other ways you can actually take this rough cut out of Prelude and do something interesting with it. Now, in this case, we had Premiere and Prelude both on the same system. That was really handy. You can see how easy it was to send my rough cut into Premiere. But let's say the editor is not on this system. Maybe he's not even in the same building. I can still take this rough cut along with all the media, package it up, and send it off. So again, I'm going to go and select the rough cut, go into the file menu, and this time click on the export item. That brings up the dialog for export. I can go ahead and choose to save this to a local disk or send it via FTP. I'll give it a project name. In this case, I'll call it test project export. And I can save it as a Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro 7 XML project file. We'll do Premiere Pro. I want to check this box here for media. This is really important. This is actually going to say take a copy of the media that was used in this rough cut copy it into a media subfolder alongside the project file we're about to generate. That way I have all the media and the project file bundled together, ready to go. All that's left is click OK. It'll ask me for a destination. I'll pick our Adobe TV uh, subfolder. I'll call this export RC. And we're done. After a few little export uh, dialog boxes, uh, we're done and it's ready to go and ship that off to an editor. So another cool feature in Adobe Prelude CS6 is the ability to extend the interface and the behaviors. One of the ways you can do that is by replacing the project panel that you've seen in these demos with your own Media Asset Manager interface. The way you do this is through Flash Panel or Content Panel extensions. There is a complete library API that you can use um, that would basically let you drive Prelude the same way we drive Prelude with our project panel, but in this case, it would actually be your own Flash Panel that interface directly to your own MAM, and it can show all the, all the clips and all the metadata associated with your MAM and bring them into Prelude. When you save metadata in Prelude or generate new metadata, Prelude will push that information back to the MAM through your panel. So another one of the features in Adobe Prelude CS6 is called unassociated metadata. You would use unassociated metadata in the case where maybe you have a proxy workflow. You can send your proxies out for initial logging and review, and all the metadata and markers that are added into that clip can then be saved off as a separate XMP text file. When you actually have the raw clips available, you can then re-import those metadata files directly into your raw clips, and all the markers and metadata line up exactly where they were with your proxies. So there you have it. There's a quick demo of Adobe Prelude CS6. Thanks for watching.